Hello, hello. All right, we're going to try something a little different this time. That uh, rain's coming, clouds are looming. I get the lightning warnings. I was trying to run a, on the tractor today, but I uh, mowed for a bit. We'll let this blow over and I'll go back. Uh, in the meantime, I got a new bed that I'm hoping to knock out. It's 4th of July weekend. So I'm hoping that I can find the time between rain to get this section done. So I had some friends come out and, and kind of clear this area while they're here. Um, it's my next bed. So I'll kind of explain as I go. Um, I wanted to get a before shot. It's not really before because before was more like out there <laughs> and now it's been cleared. So at least we'll, we'll call it a blank slate shot. And then uh, I'll do a few videos this time. I normally do one running video because my editing skills are... Uh, well, you can't call it a skill. I don't do it, um, but my son does. So I'm going to commandeer his services, and then I'll explain what I'm doing. Um, it's going to end up being a circle all the way around here. And then as you get to the center of the circle, um, which is kind of arbitrary size, I just figured out um, start in the middle, like here. This is my middle. And then I measured out with a string to the edge of about where I want it to be. And then I take that string and I drag it around the middle and then I put post, stick, stick, stick. Some of these got moved so I gotta re-measure re everything today um, and smooth it all out. And then I'll explain what I'm doing and why. Stay tuned. All right, I'm back. I, uh, we got rained out, so I had to take a little break, do some other stuff. We got a little pause. I made the family come out and uh, help me mark out the circle. So now I've got green flags going all the way around. It comes through right to here. And then, um, you know, it's, it's, I guess you'd call it a Mandela garden. I mean, a lot of people do those. And um, in this case, it's gonna be a yin and yang or yin and yawn, or I don't know how to say it properly, but you know what I'm talking about. So to mark that, I needed a straight line. So I took and I marked straight line all the way across, full diameter, and then you mark, you know, from center to the end, half the radius. And so basically you stand in the radius and with a string line to the center, you make the curve that comes out. And wherever that crosses the perimeter is your point, right? And then you do the same thing from the other side you take half the radius from the center to the middle midpoint there and then you take a string and then you make that line that goes that way and then once you've done that you end up with that that curve that you see and uh, so I have the big part here and then the little tail goes that way and the big part over there and the tail goes this way um, so why did I do that shape in particular because it's fun and I wanted to that's the whole point here. So as we get to the end of this video, then I'll show you why. Okay, so here we go, round three. We got a little bit more progress made. I think it's a little easier to see what we've got going on. So if I come out now, we composted some better than others, just from a few different piles that I got going on. Um, and then we threw some old hay from the goat barn down on top of the planting areas. So over here, you've got the walkway, you know, the big S curve going through. And then you've got the first swoop with the hole over here. And then on this end, you can't really see it, but that's the hole. And then the swoop goes all the way around there. And so the yin and yang is taking shape little by little. Hopefully I'll get some planting done a little later today. All right, well, we're back with the post planting of the yin and yang um, Mandela garden. So I wanted to quickly go through, it's been about a week. I, I ran out of time last week to do a shot and the plants have been sitting in there about just about a week. Not a lot of rain for whatever reason this time of year, but we're finally starting to get rain again. 
So I wanted to kind of go over which plants are planted in here, um, why I did a Mandela garden in the beginning, or, or to begin with. Um, and I still have some space in here, so over time it'll evolve and it'll grow, and I'll, I'll probably do an update video later, but I wanted to wrap up the first um, series of videos, which is the getting it planted and, and cover what plants I, I put in here to begin with. Um, so to review, we have a footpath path that starts here and S curves that way through the garden. We've got the circle that goes in the center or the eye or however you want to call it of the Mandela garden. And then you got the fatter section and then it thins out to a tail over here. And then over here, you got the opposite, right? So you got the round section out to the pin and then back. So which plants did I choose and why? So on this side, we've got several. I uh, see one, two, three, and it continues over on this side of the thing of Katuk or Ketuk, or depending on who you are and how you say it. So that's gonna be part of the perimeter. It's a little shadier on this side and it tolerates it really well. It's got a nice nutty flavor and it'll get like a medium shrub looking thing. And then as we go a little further, we've got um, cranberry hibiscus, also known as false roselle. I've got several of them planted around here and I will let them grow and fill in over time. To, um, the idea would be that I would end up with a wall all through here, it's a block. And then there's gonna be a trail on the outside as well as on the inside so that you can harvest as you walk around the Mandela. Um, and then when you get to this side of the edge, there's um, the true roselle or Jamaican sorrel planted along the edge. And it keeps going all the way around that way because it likes sun. That one, I've not had good luck with it being perennial here. It tends to die back and I end up with an annual um, shrub, but that's okay because I could replant it every year and I get stuff. So it should be okay. We'll see how it does. Um, inside the larger planting area over here, I planted um, longevity spinach as it goes around here. So it should fill in nicely and I'll, I'll fill in more if I need to, but that's kind of going to be the ground cover area over here. In the center, I've got um, spiderwort. Um, every part of that is edible. I will probably go harvest a few others from other places to make this a little bit fuller um, in the center. And I'll probably put some sort of structure to make the, to kind of define the ring in the middle here. Like um, I'll take a barrel and cut a section of it or something to sink it in there. So you get the look for a while longer at some point. I don't even know how long the Mandela thing will last because um, once everything gets growing, it, it kind of ends up doing, you know, nature does what nature does like it does back here. Um, that's all um, seminal pumpkin and some bamboo going in there. So I let it do what it wants. Um, this thinner section of the Mandela, I haven't planted anything yet in here. I'm kind of making my mind up as to what I'm going to put in here. I did this particular one. Um, everything in here has to be edible raw. Um, and so why did I do that and why did I pick the shape? Um, one, it looks cool to me and it's fun. Um, and, and that's really it. You know, in this case, I'm, I'm just playing with my food and you're always told not to play with your food. Well, in this case, it's okay. You know, like it, it brings me joy to make a shape and, uh, and to challenge myself with different, um, design ideas. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, the yin and yang in particular in the garden is a great reminder for me for when I get frustrated that, you know, you get a certain pest or a certain disease happening and you end up in the, you know, the dark side of the circle and you're feeling pretty bad about it and you're feeling defeated. And, and then you realize that you, you got to have those in order to get the good stuff. So in a real garden and in a real nurture uh, or nature scenario and, and what permaculture is trying to mimic, you've got to have both. And, and the reality is the, the concept of good and bad it's really a human concept um, in nature. There just is. There's not good. There's not bad. There's just life. And so um, I can't get beneficials in a garden. Um, I can't get predators in the garden unless I've got something for the predators to eat. Um, and uh, if I don't have flowers, I don't get pollinators. If I don't have um, pest uh, insects, what we consider pests that are eating the plants that we want, um, then I don't have predators. And so... Um, you can't have one without the other. And so um, the yin and yang is kind of a reminder whenever you see something going wrong, you know, fight the urge to spritz something on it to control this one little problem um, and just wait and hang out um, and chill because 
nature has a way of balancing things out if we can write it out, right? So I'll continue with the plants that we've got. I've got some um, Okinawan spinach on this side of the circle to counteract to the longevity spinach. To me, they're very similar. Um, and so hopefully they'll do well in here and they'll fill in. In the center, I've got jewels of Opar. Um, and then along the edge, um, along that log, I didn't want anything too tall because that's kind of where you where you come into the this part of the food forest. You come into the center. So I wanted to be able to see over the log without having a hedge. Um, so I planted garlic chives along here and I'll let it fill in um, over time so it'll have a kind of a wall of garlic chives. So the, there's a concept called a fedge, which is a food hedge that people talk about sometimes. So the concept would be if, if I'm successful, the perimeter will be katuk and then a low area of the garlic chives and then the roselle as you go through all the way to the false roselle and then back to Katuk with openings for the walkway to come and go from either end and so you can walk around in here um, i wanted a salad fedge mandela why why not it was fun and i thought well it's a good challenge to see if i can find enough things to fill in um, for example in this area that has not yet been planted i might just put sweet potatoes because it's something I can reach down and pick the leaves and eat. Um, but then that means I gotta come up with something to put over there and I haven't yet. And so in time, as I think of things that I wanna put in there that um, I might do like a, I don't know, some kind of a basil, maybe a blue basil or something that you can just walk in here with a small bowl and grab a bunch of leaves off of the various plants in here, um, chop up a few things and have a flavorful salad and um, I think it'll be fun to do that. And so uh, in time, I will post updates and we'll hopefully have some great progress to show off. Um, but this wraps up the series on planting the Mandela Food Hedge or Fedge Garden. I hope you enjoy it. If you have any ideas, please comment down below. Thanks.